I'm gonna rip this all out and start again. What's he doing? What a moron! I decided to blow it all. 720 grand. If we get 2,000 thumbs up on this video, I will swing into this mud pile. Good morning, guys. We are here in the beautiful Cambridgeshire countryside. We're at this amazing property where we're planning for a huge garden lighting installation and I'm gonna show you around and show you what we've got in store because we've got a full garden lighting series hopefully coming up later on on the channel. And it's something a bit different, so hopefully it'll be interesting and entertaining for you guys. Then we've got loads of other stuff going on today, so I'm gonna take you along with me for the ride, show you a little bit of the day in the life of an electrician YouTuber. There's a lot going on. Today's video is sponsored by Tradeify. I'll tell you a little bit about that later, but first, hit the like button, subscribe, and let's get into it. So these are our landscaping friends, Clucky and Plucky, and uh, they're busy preparing the ground to make it as fertile as possible. Seems like they're doing a good job so far, but they're not very talkative. All they do is keep clucking at me. So this is gonna be a beautiful pond water feature. And of course, lighting will really help to accentuate this. So we're gonna be putting some lighting in and around this area to highlight the planting and make it a nice cozy space that they can use at any time of the year. But we've also got electrical gear that's gotta go in here for the pond pumps, filters, all that kind of stuff. So there's gonna be a little hidden electrical cabinet somewhere over here, hopefully, where we can keep all the equipment hidden away nicely but easily accessible for maintenance. The electricians who've done the housework have already run two supplies to outside which is really helpful but I think they've not left the cables long enough so they've got a couple of armoured cables over there behind me but they're not really long enough to go where we want them to go. Over here there's going to be some um, spike spotlights either side of the path where there's going to be some beautiful plants that they want to accentuate with some nice lighting. Over there on that, that sort of bank, there's going to be some railway sleepers with little stainless steel like pin lights recessed into them just to give a little bit of light on the path as well, which is going to be really nice. And then over out the front, there's going to be some driveway lights. So I'll show you that as well. So this is the front drive, and obviously as you arrive at a beautiful property like this, it's nice to have some lighting either side of the driveway. They've got lighting here at the moment, but it's pretty shocking. I'll show you how it's been done. So at the moment, you've got these spike spots, which have just kind of corroded and for, you know, they're just not working. The spikes have all corroded. They're just cheapo ones and you get what you pay for when it comes to garden lighting. We usually recommend really high quality fittings. These are just kind of pretty dodgy. And then the cables have just been slung in. They've just kind of been clipped every so often to the fence. And then you've got these sort of junction boxes where, you know, there's no grip on the cables. They could easily be pulled out and stuff. It's gonna be our pleasure to just rip this all out and start again. So there's a nice three phase distribution board in this garage plenty of power on site for this customer which is great and off that there is this circuit fed so it comes into this uh, junction box and then they've run an armored cable down here but just look at that like they've literally just hacked the armoring away they've not done a proper armored gland they've just whisker whisker glanded it in but the armoring is already getting corroded and stuff like that so we'll probably have to remove this and the other end of it is even more dodgy let me show you that <laughs> they've run it under along up this fence and then they've run it just into the bottom of this light fitting here but again they've just cut off the armoring they've just taken the inner sheath of the armored straight into the light fitting so i mean it looks like a bit of a diy job or something i think probably before the customer bought this house whoever owned it just did this bit of a diy job and it's, it's like any situation it works you know, the lights light up, but it doesn't actually mean that it's safe. I don't know why, but people seem to feel like they can get away with DIY a bit more when it's outside for some reason. In my opinion, it's actually more dangerous because you've got lots of other influences, external influences like weather, moisture to deal with. It's kind of worse doing your own DIY electrics if you don't know what you're doing outside than it is inside. But let me know in the comments if you're an electrician and you found the same. So a lot of people ask us about our work boots and these are the 
big boots, steel blue boots. They're so comfy and they're just, they look great. Really nice boots. So for those of you who've been asking about them, there's a link in the description where you can get a little bit of a discount. So this is a really exciting project. I love garden lighting and it's not something that we do a huge amount of, but when we do, we, we really nail it. So I'm hoping that this will be a project that we can share with you over the coming months. Let me know in the comments to help us plan for future videos what you would like to see from the aspect of garden lighting installations because we want to make the video as interesting as possible for you guys. But anyway, the next appointment calls, so we'll see you on the road. What do you think? Should I try and swing off of it? I think the branch is going to snap. And secondly, this mud pile is kind of in the way. So if I swing off of it, I'm going to come straight back and plunge myself into the mud pile. So how about this? If we get 2000 thumbs up on this video, then in a follow up episode, I will swing into this mud pile. So hit the thumbs up. <laughs> So heading over to CBS now to get the new van kitted out and ready. You guys have been all wildly guessing what the new van is after the last video. So I'm gonna to reveal to you who the winners are in just a minute. So keep watching. So this is it, the new van reveal. I was being all mysterious on the last video, trying to get you guys to guess in the comments what it is. So the official name is, I better read it off because it's complicated. It's, so it is a VW Transporter. Well done for you who guessed that. It's a T30 panel van, high line, short wheelbase, 150 PS, two litre TDI, BMT, six speed manual. That is the official name. The unofficial name is the most ultimate artisan van ever because it's got a full race line spec, this van, it's, it's nuts. Like my friend, Chris, who sold it to me, he gave me a really good deal. That's why I kind of snatched his hand off. And basically he bought it brand new. He got it fully specced out by race line with these amazing like racing seats. It's got all sorts of racking already in the back of it. It's got like a race line front spoiler kit, uh, rear spoiler. Kenwood sounds custom sound system. It's got a custom alarm system. It's got um, additional fitted rear camera. Like it's fully specced out basically. So it's an it's an amazing van. So well done for all of you who guessed right in the comments. We're here at CBS now. We've just arrived, and they're going to be doing a few things for us. So obviously we want to get deadlocks put in. That's pretty standard just for security. So they're going to be doing that. It's already got a high spec alarm, so we don't need an, an additional alarm fitting, but they are going to be putting the Delta roof bars and the pipe tubes on for us as well. And then it's going to go over to our sign writers who are going to remove the current sign writing. Hence why I've not showed you the whole van yet. I can't really show it all because it's got my friend's previous company sign writing on, but they're going to take all, off the old sign writing and we're going to do something special with the new sign writing on this one as well. So looking forward to be able to re reveal it to you on a future video but yeah i'm just dropping it off now to my friend ardil ready for it to get all kitted out so i've come to pick up my new lambo the new artisan color we've decided to brand everything orange now just to change it up a little bit you know as you can see i've been doing really well lately based on my last video i decided to blow it all 720 grand on one car Can I show you? Yes. Yeah. So this is what we've got at the moment. So um, it's all kind of... Globus stuff, cool. Yeah. It's quite nice to have a van that's already kitted out. Um, yeah, you can all that. I think he did it himself, probably. Yeah, um, it's a race line spec and he's had loads of... So he's had it all kitted out cool. with a custom sound system already and uh, Kenwood, like, front and rear cameras and... Uh, it's got a leisure battery under the seat, so apparently we can run like loads of stuff off the inverter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the proper Rhino yeah, one on yeah, just to match all the other vans. So I don't know if this. Will you have to take these off yeah. as well? Yeah. Do they? Do these come with the van? Do you think, or are they uh, no, part of the turtle now. thing? Okay, cool. So if you can do your bit, yeah. then send it over to CBS, and they'll remove the old sign writing, and then they'll do the new sign writing and wrap the, the tubes and stuff. It's all right, it was an absolute bargain, so see ya.
I've been relegated to the dog bed. Thanks, Mr. Cameraman. <laughs> We need to introduce Elijah. Hi everybody, this Hello is world. Elijah. I'm the new social media manager at Artisan, so nice to meet everyone. He's, he's the guy who's basically saved my life recently <laughs> because I was doing everything myself, it was nuts. Elijah's come on board and already he's very busy full time doing our social media. I don't know how I did it before, but he's doing it way better than me anyway, so welcome aboard. Thanks it's actually much. my first time meeting him in person today. We interviewed him on Zoom. We've only had Zoom and WhatsApp calls and yeah. stuff. <laughs> like literally today we just met each other for the first time. So yeah, and we're going to do our admin team meeting now here in the office. And then Elijah with Max behind the camera is going to help us to plan the setup for the studio. That's it, isn't it, I think? So, welcome all. Thank you all for your hard work. And um, have a lovely week, and I'm sure I'll chat to you individually at some point over the next few days. See you later. Bye, guys. Thank you, Jordan. Bye. 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 OK, see you. Ah! Oh, we definitely need some yeah, chairs thanks. in here, don't we? Oh. Right, well that was an interesting team meeting. There's a lot going on at the moment, it's just so intense. We've got a new admin person just said yes to the job, which I'm super happy about, so that's good. Uh, there's just so much going on. And one of the things that I need to speak to you about is the whole wood debacle <laughs> that happened. Um, you may or may not have seen in a previous video um, Lee very deftly managed to hide the cable for a customer, which from an artisan point of view, spot on. You know, we pride ourselves in doing the jobs that a lot of people would find difficult to do, whether it's hiding cables or, you know, tricky stuff. Um, we pride ourselves on that. So I watched the video and I was like, hey, great job. You did really well there. You know, you managed to hide the cable, customer's super happy and everything. But in the comments, as soon as the video launched, one big theme kept coming out, which was Lee had chopped out some wood in the corner of the room and people were saying, it's structural, what are you doing? You shouldn't be chopping out that wood, it's structural. And I was like, is this just keyboard warriors being, being keyboard warriors or is this real, you know? So I contacted a structural engineer friend of mine and he was like, I think it might be structural. So my mind's now going crazy, like, oh, what do we do? We need to resolve this. You know, we can't, if, it, if we've caused a problem, we need to resolve it. So I phoned the customer and explained the situation to him and he was lovely about it. And we've got a structural engineer who's going on Monday. He's gonna have a look at it. So we're gonna have to take off all the plasterboard again, show him exactly what Lee's done. And if it, it has caused structural damage that is you know, actually a problem, then obviously we're gonna do our absolute best to fix it. It's just one of those things, I guess, everyone makes mistakes. Um, and if you don't know something, you don't know something. The fact is we very rarely work in new build houses. We don't do first and second fix electrics on new builds ever because that's not our market. We work usually in older houses that are being refurbed and so when Lee saw all that wood in the corner, exactly like me, I would have just thought, oh, they've just put a load of packing wood in to hold the, the window in place because the window is quite close to, to the wall in the corner. That's what I would have thought. And chiseling out a bit of wood to run the cable in, in my opinion, I probably wouldn't have thought twice about it. But if you know how timber frame houses are constructed and you've seen them and and you've been used to following the regs when you're doing first fix electrics in them, you might think actually that wood is supporting a lintel that is on top of the window or something like that. And then you would obviously think twice before cutting it out. So you live and learn. But the thing is with mistakes, as you guys have seen from the past, we're not perfect. We do make mistakes, everyone makes mistakes. And then you can choose to either hide them, like I could have just choose to take that video down if I wanted to, or you can choose to face up to them and deal with them. And that's what we do. 
I've always said over and over again, the difference between good customer service and great customer service is how you deal with problems when they happen because there's always going to be problems at times. It's not about never having problems. It's about if there is a problem, how do you deal with it on that rare occasion? And just as we always try to do, we're going to go above and beyond for our customer to make sure that the situation turns out well. And that's all we can do at the end of the day. And we're going to learn from the situation that's happened so that next time, if it happens again, they think twice. Like I'm, I'm having a meeting with all the guys who work on the tools to say to them now, look, if you ever chop out a wall and you see something that you're not sure about, before you start hacking it apart, just ask somebody, get some advice before you delve in. And that's the best way to avoid making similar mistakes in the future. So that is my confession. I guess thanks to the people who brought it to our attention. If it is a problem, I'm hoping that it's not, but we'll, we'll see, I'll update you when we find out more from the structural engineer. There we go, that's my little, my little rant of the day over. So we're at my house now and we're doing a ring video doorbell install here. I'm putting a ring security light up and we're doing, we're just trying out a load of the ring products at my house for a little while. We're doing some content for them. So yeah, it's quite nice to just do, do a few little DIY jobs at my house. So these are a very controversial product. They're called wire nuts. And in America, this is what they use as their main form of connection. In the UK, they used to use these connector blocks. Actually, if we go way back, they used to use the porcelain versions of these. I've actually found those when ripping out old stuff when we've been doing rewires. But mainly we use screw connectors in the UK, or now we use Wagos, Wagos, Vargos, whatever you call them, push fit connectors. But because the ring is an American product, they give you these wire nuts with it. And if you're an, an American watching, let me know if I'm doing this right or not. So I think you're supposed to twist the wires together first anyway, and then screw the wire nut on. It's probably, I've probably left it a bit too long. Let's just do this one as well. I can hear all the Americans in the comments now going, oh my gosh, what's he doing? What a moron. Here we go. Ooh, nice and tight. Yeah, I mean, it is quite a nice snug connection. Oh, except, except it just snapped off. I suppose using bell wire in a wire nut is probably not the best. Somebody pointed out to me recently, which I didn't know, one of our viewers, that I always say epic. It's like everything's epic, and then it's become too... It's like it's not really epic anymore because I say it all the time. So I'm going to start saying awesome instead of epic. Or let me know in the comments another alternative for epic, awesome. Maybe there's a really great word that I can adopt as my expletive for how great things are. Now this light has been winding me up ever since I moved into this house. It's absolutely rubbish. The PIR goes off every time somebody drives past. I'm actually really happy to get rid of this, but I don't really know what I'm gonna discover when I take the cover off, so it's going to be interesting. Mm. Not very IP rated, and the screws are not very secure. Okay, this is not too bad. Fairly decent finish on the wall, so that's good. My tool bag's pretty much empty. All the marksman tools that I've ever had have been pilfered by Luke, because he absolutely loves them, so he's got a little collection of them. And all I'm left with is the kind of crummy tools that you never actually use. So I'm gonna to have to revert to using a screwdriver to mark my holes. This house, honestly, like every time I drill anything, you see that already, the mortar is starting to crumble away from the bricks. They're so badly built, these houses. It just scares me every time I have to do any drilling. Now we're done here at my house. We've got the ring products all set up and working, so I'm really happy about that. I'm now heading over to the office again. This is a box of lovely tools. 
And a little known secret is we have another channel, it's called Tools for Sparks. And in here are some tools that we're gonna be filming, especially on our other channel. So go and subscribe to Tools for Sparks because we're here to get ready for this studio set up for Tools for Sparks so that we can make some epic tool content. All right. First proper day in the new office and we've got a present been sent to us already. I think I know who it's from. Oh, nice. That is very nice. So it's from Whisker. Thank you, guys. Um, they've given us some of that, their lovely gel. Um, but they've given us a chili, chili bottle as well, which is really nice because um, I've always wanted one of these. Oh, and it's a Whisker branded one. So that's pretty cool. I think it's one of those bottles that can keep stuff hot or cold. So I can have my coffee in there or I can have a nice cold beer in there in the, in the summer and pretend that I'm just drinking water. So we're here ready to start assembling our epic studio. We've brought in loads of stuff. We've already got like loads of boxes of tools to review and things. We've got a table that we're gonna set up, well, kind of desk, professional lighting set up. It's all going on in here. So I'm gonna just get stuck in and start putting things together. There's a thumbnail. So we've just done the first Tools for Sparks 2.0 little segment. We've just been reviewing this lovely little tool. So it's quite exciting. Proper setup, studio lighting, better camera, autofocus. We're gonna make some epic content here. Really, really excited. And we've got lots of interesting tools to review, but if you've got a specific tool that you'd like us to review on Tools for Sparks, let us know in the comments because we can add it to our list and then we can do a review for you. So I just remembered that I promised a customer that I'd get a quote out to them today. I did a site visit yesterday and it's just for an EV charger, but they've kind of been in a little bit of a hurry. It's been a manic day today, so I've not actually been in the office at all. But thanks to today's video sponsor, Tradeify. Tradeify helps me to do quotes on the go. So I can literally just tap new quote, then I can choose to create a quote from a template select one of our templates that we like to use. So in this case, it's a Hypervolt. So I can just tick Hypervolt multi-choice, uh, click OK. And then it will populate the quote automatically with all the materials that we usually use for those jobs. And I can literally just delete the ones that we don't need on that particular job. We've imported the price file from our wholesalers into Tradeify. So we've got all our materials prices in there. And then we just add our labor in terms of hours, press approve and send it to the customer, it's super easy. The customer can click accept at their end and then we get the job booked in. So thanks for Tradeify for sponsoring today's video. It's a great bit of software that helps trades people like myself. It could help you too. Check out the link in the description where you get 50% off for your first three months. I love being a YouTube electrician because we get to try out loads of cool tools. We've just been filming some brilliant little videos for Instagram and stuff. Unilite, we love their products, we use them all the time. We've got a 25% off discount code from all Unilite products in the description. So head to the description and check that out. But we're just kind of packing up here now. It's gone half past five, I'm ready for some dinner and I've got a live stream to do tonight on Instagram. Head over and follow us on Instagram if you don't do so already. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Don't forget to smash a like if you haven't done so already and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching guys and have a great day.